This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's that time of year. It's iPhone time. You Android people, just go and play amongst yourselves. Come back later. But I know some of you are going to be tempted because, well, it's a big iPhone release, literally 4.7 inch and 5.5 inch. This is the iPhone 6. This is the iPhone 6 Plus. Just came out, available now. Well, you know, you might have to wait if you didn't pre-order one. We're going to look at them now in this first look. Here they are, finally, the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. Obviously, the Plus is the bigger one of these two, and, well, it's big times for you iPhone users who've been stuck with 4-inch displays for some time, maybe you're even an Android or a Windows Phone user at this point, and you're liking your iPhone just fine, you just couldn't take that small display. Well, this may be time to consider coming back again. 4.7-inch display on our so-called little fellow here, and 5.5 inches. Nice, nice improvement there. Lots to see on screen. And for the Plus, I have big hands. Now you're going to read a lot of reviews that say, oh, I have big hands or I don't have small hands. Suddenly the size of our hands becomes very important with these phones. And I'm used to big phones. I've used the Note since the first generation, Note all the way up to the Note 3, the LG G3, which is a 5.5-inch phone as well. And though this may not be the most petite among phones in the sort of fabletish range, it's manageable. And one thing that I actually like about it a lot is the sides are curved and the sides are thin. Makes it friendly to hold. Some people find the Note 3 easier to hold. It has slightly straighter edges, but I find the, the fake chrome plastic to be a little bit slippery. And I actually haven't felt like I needed a case because of the slipperiness factor. Obviously, this is the space gray model with the black front on it. They all have anodized aluminum backs on them, but it's really not that slippery. Now, if your hands are real sweaty, it might be, so it will be time for a case. But we'll cover some case options like Apple's own leather case so you can see that. Our friend, the 4.7 inch regular iPhone 6 right here, nice size, pretty easy to hold. I, I'm not having any problems with it. They've moved the power button to right here because getting to the top with one hand is just going to be impossible for anybody except for, well, you know, an NBA star. Notice the little white stripe over here. This happens to be obviously the gold model, which is really very styling. This, I think particularly it looks good in the 6-inch, uh, model 6 size rather here because the proportions are just right, but it looks sort of like a classic timepiece almost. Anyway, but the white stripes here, when I first first saw the iPhone 6 and M Plus, I thought, man, that's just kind of like tacky. But in person, I get it. And just thinking about it over time, because what it's doing is it's giving you a kind of generational fallback to the iPhone 4, 4S, 5, 5S, which had the separate areas, the glass and the top and the bottom with the metal. So there's a kind of continuity of design. So you look at it and still somehow this area and this area say iPhone to you. And it's actually not that bad looking. And just a solid colored slab would be kind of boring. Now let's see how our stripes look on the space gray model and enlarged. A bit more subtle there. You've got light gray versus dark gray, and depending how you're looking at how the light's reflecting, this might actually look like the darker gray here. In person, it looks lighter than the material here. On the video, it's showing up as kind of darker, which is kind of funny. And then there's the white one, which is, well, white face, and then just a lighter anodized aluminum here. Overall, the thinness of the device is 6.9 millimeters for the iPhone 6 and 7.1. Exquisitely thin. That's 0 0.27 or 0 0.28 inches for those two models. Really nice and skinny. We have our volume controls, nice metal over here, and here's our little slider lock for the ringer silencer as always. As ever, lightning port and speaker at the bottom. God forbid we get serious speakers here, huh? And there's the headphone jack. Same thing on our little friend, the 6. Really, you're just looking at the same design, only blown up or shrunk down depending on how you want to look at it. Nano SIM card tray on the side, your usual paper clip or pokey tool will take care of that for you. And the back of the phone, 8 megapixel camera on both of these f2.2 fast lens, backside illuminated sensor, HDR. Hybrid autofocus, that means it uses phase detection in addition to contrast auto detection for very fast focus and the two color LED flash there for better natural flash exposure. And I know some of you have been doing estimated estimated size comparisons using printouts on the, from your printer, that sort of thing. So here it is in person. You can see the difference between the iPhone 6 on top of the iPhone 6 Plus. Obviously quite the difference in size, but what about some other phones? Actually hands-on in person, we'll show you.
Here's the Samsung Galaxy S5 versus the iPhone 6. They are just about the same size. I think the Samsung Galaxy S5 5.1-inch screen, so they, they have smaller bezels, so they get a bigger screen in there. But size-wise, for me, I think it's a pretty moderate-sized phone by today's standards and pretty easy to handle. So, And the nice thing about the iPhone is it is a bit narrower. As you can see right here, it's also a little bit shorter too, but the narrowness makes it easier for those of us who have smaller hands to hold on to. And here's the Galaxy S5 next to the iPhone 6 Plus. Big and bigger. Yeah. And here's a comparison of even greater interest. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. The Note 4 is about the same size as the Note 3, so this comparison should hold through there. And you can see they're just about the same size, but the iPhone 6 Plus is actually a little bit taller. It's a quite tall and narrow phone. So those of you who have skinny jeans and not very deep pockets, well, that one's certainly going to be sticking out a bit more. And if we superimpose them once again, you're looking at just about the same thing. The Galaxy is just barely any wider, really nothing much to say there. And in terms of thickness, they're both really skinny phones. The difference is in the straight edge plastic here on the Samsung and the Galaxy Note 4 will be a metal surround, still straight edge, good for grip right there, versus the curviness. Now the curviness feels nice in your hand on the iPhone. Some people may find the straight edge more grippy on the Galaxy Note. And now we have a size comparison with the 6. This is the LG G3 and the iPhone 6 Plus. So the LG G3 is somewhere in between. It has a 5.5 inch display and currently one of the Android flagships. And last but not least, here's our little iPhone 5S. Looks absolutely absurdly small next to, well, the 6 Plus. And then if we put it down at the other end, let's go down here now and you can see, but not too, too absurdly different when you compare it to the 6. So you get the idea now, hopefully, about size comparisons and which one might be good for you. Both phones obviously support 4G LTE, and pretty much like with the iPhone 5S, there's really very few models that are being sold in the U.S., and they're more interchangeable than you might realize. I know a lot of people have been buying the T-Mobile one. That's a confusing story. The way it worked with the 5S, and it seems to be the same way with the 6 and 6 Plus, is if you buy it direct from an app, the Apple Store, either online or the Apple physical store, pay full retail, and when you activate it by plugging it into iTunes or setting it up on the phone, then it will be unlocked. If you buy it from a T-Mobile store, if you buy it on one of the T-Mobile monthly payment plans, it will be locked. And the Verizon one, well, it is always unlocked because... That was the price Verizon had to pay for getting a lot of nice, juicy 700 megahertz LTE spectrum. The government said, haha, well, in return, you have to sell your phones unlocked. I'm sure Verizon's not thrilled that people know that, but that could also be an option for those of you who un want an unlocked phone. There are 16 LTE bands supported in the models available in the U.S. By the way, Sprint still uses a different model, so that's a whole other game right there. Anyway, you're going to find that this is going to be a great world travel, and it's just it's insane how many LTE bands that are on these phones. Good data speeds, good reception. So far, very stable. And look to our detailed reviews to learn more about that. Both have dual band Wi-Fi, 802.11ac. Yay, finally. Of course, I have Bluetooth 4.0. We have NFC, and that is for Apple Pay, not for anything else, just for Apple Pay coming out next month. 1.4 gigahertz dual core Apple A8 CPU, 64 bit, a little bit faster than the A7, no surprise there. And it has the M8 motion co processor on board. Display resolution, as always, Apple's a little bit wonky with that, so the iPhone 6 has a 13, 34 by 750 resolution display. That's 326 PPI pixel density. That's the same as the iPhone 5S. The 6 Plus has a 1920 by 1080 resolution for 401 PPI. Either way, the displays on these are just really, really crazy beautiful. Looks painted on. They get the display closer to the top level of glass. Every single iteration of evolution of these displays. And it's just absolutely lovely. Even the smaller model here, I know it's just not like full HD or going even 2K resolution like my LG G3, but it's a gorgeous looking display. Love it. And the same thing goes for the 6 Plus as well. Just really stunning. Very bright. 500 nits of brightness on both of these. iOS 8 has a couple of neat new features on it. A thing that I like is improved notifications where you have actionable items right here. Here's our notifications. So if you want to reply in line to a message, you can. And then we have our 
basic notifications right here. You got stock information, your weather, all that sort of thing too. Also a new double tap feature here, people that you contact the most often are up top, so you can call them, text them, you got it, and then this is all the applications that are running. Last but not least, here is the updated keyboard with little emojis right there and voice command and so on. We get a period, we still don't get a comma on the main keyboard without switching to symbol. And in landscape mode, we have a hyper busy keyboard suddenly, don't we? As always, Apple's keyboard works really well. The touch sensitivity seems tuned just right for not making too many mistakes. We'll give it that. This might actually be a little too much stuff. You got your arrow keys over here. We have our common punctuation on the right hand side. And we have cut, we have paste, which is the little squiggly thing right there. We have microphone access still, we got emojis, we got numbers. So it's pretty nice. And you can add third party keyboards now. So those of you who love swipe or swift key, yes, you can do it. Though not all may have integration with the dictation feature. So again, we're gonna have detailed reviews of each of these phones, but I can tell you right now, Apple has done a good job. These things may not be cheap, but they are lovely. And for those of you who have been hankering for something in the way of a larger screen iPhone and some of the more dynamic notifications that we have, little modern amenities that Apple keeps adding, making it easier to embed pictures and actually leave little voice messages inside of an iMessage, text style message, it's all here now. We're going to look at them in in-depth in each of our in-depth reviews. So that's the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus, both available now. Well, kind of, sort of. They might not be in stock. They're going to come and go for the first month after release. You know how that goes. Anyway, first look, we're going to have a detailed review of the 6 and the 6 Plus as well, but you get the idea. They're both very fine phones. We like them, and we're going to look at them in detail later. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written reviews of these phones and subscribe to our YouTube channel.